This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. All right, you knew this already, community matters. It's not just community matters, it's community does matter. I'm Jay Fidel, and today's Tuesday at one o'clock block, and with me, Rabbi Itzel Krasnjanski from Chabad of Hawaii, and I'd like to ask him to introduce our two special guests from Australia. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for having me on your show. It's a pleasure, as always. And um, our guests here are uh, Hasidic Jews, a father and son, who are visiting here from down under, from Sydney, Australia. They come here every year around this time. Uh, good friends, and uh, we're going to be talking about the Chabad and the Rebbe and um, the worldwide reach of Chabad. And I thought, what what uh, better uh, opportunity is there than to ask? Uh, David and Shmuley, David and Shmuley, to come join us and to uh, share with us uh, what is it like to be a living, breathing Hasidic Jew down under. In Sydney, no less. In yeah. Sydney. <laughs> so you want to deliver this in, uh, in English or Yiddish? <laughs> <laughs> so David, tell us about yourself. Uh, what would you like to know? What do you do? Uh, What's it like to be a Hasidic Jew in Sydney? Uh, so I work in finance, and to be a to be a Hasidic Jew is uh, that's a challenge every day, especially in Sydney, Australia. Why is it a challenge? Why is it a challenge? Because if you're not of let's say the so-called norm, like everybody else, you're kind of swimming against the tide. Right? There's always some uh, obstacles in the way, so you so it's difficult. Yeah. I thought Australia had focused on inclusivity and, uh, and uh, d diversity in the last few years, no? It does, it does. But still, nevertheless, it doesn't mean just people don't change overnight. Mm. You know? So, Shmuel, how much of what your father said do you agree with? Um, all, with it, all of it, I guess. Smart answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a student. Where are you a student? In Kassatara College. Okay, and where is that? That's in Sydney also? Yeah. What are you majoring in? Um, I don't know. No. Years, I said what year? Oh, uh, going into year 10, grade 10. Um, yeah. You want to be in finance too, or you want to be in engineering? I don't know yet. Okay, will, will you give me a call and let me know when, when you decide? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a three-way call, uh, a four-way call. <laughs> So, Rabbi, tell us, tell us about uh, Chabad, its origins. Tell us about, um, I'm going to do this right, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson and what he did in the year 1951. Yes, for sure. Um, it's, a, it's a topic that's very near and dear to me as the Chabad representative here in Hawaii. And today actually marks the anniversary, actually tonight, tomorrow marks the anniversary of the Rebbe and that is how the Rebbe, that how it, he is known worldwide as like the Grand Rabbi. So in Hebrew it's called the Rebbe. Uh, there are many, many rabbis but there's only one Rebbe. And Rabbi Schneerson assumed the leadership of a Hasidic movement called the Chabad movement. In a moment I'll explain what Chabad means, what it stands for. In 1951, after the passing of his father-in-law, his predecessor, who was the sixth Chabad Rebbe who came to America from, uh, originally from Russia, uh, he was actually expelled from Russia. Firstly, he was arrested for his work, his tireless work on behalf of Ju Judaism in former Soviet Union, where it was illegal to practice any sort of religion. Where in Russia? Well, he lived uh, in a, a little town called Lubavitch. Lubavitch. Ah, this, <laughs> this is important for our discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Lubavitch is a little town um, in uh, central Russia. And it's interesting, in, he, in Russian, the word Lubo means love. So Lubavitch means city of love. And that's very, very important uh, to note because the whole the whole idea of Hasidic, Hasidism 
and specifically Chabad, is the emphasis on love, loving your fellow, love of fellow man, love of God, love of life. And what's interesting is the Rebbe came onto the world scene uh, pretty much uh, right when the world was still, Jewish world, was still reeling from the effects of the Holocaust, where, where all, you know, as we all know, six million Jews were, were killed, decimated, and those who survived were, uh, you know, broken, broken and uh, displaced. displaced, and many, for many, they were sole survivors of family, so it was a very, very difficult time. And the Rebbe was able to um, uh, ignite uh, a fire of, of positivity and love into tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and ultimately to the, the reach of Chabad is pretty much all over the world. And it's been explained that the mission, uh, one of the uh, a rabbi, uh, former chief rabbi of, of England, his name was Jonathan Sachs, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, he once explained, he once said in an article that to him, the Rebbe was doing the very, very opposite of what Hitler, may his name be erased, did during the Holocaust. While Hitler and the Nazis hunted down Jews in hate to kill them and exterminate them, the Rebbe reached out to all Jews in love and this was perhaps the, the, the one thing possible to, um, to rebuild. And that's what Chabad became known. It's a, it's a, it's a movement of, of, of outreach for Jews and not just Jews, also for, you know, for the whole community, uh, you know, steeped in love, non-judgmental, and just embracing. So um, in 1951, when the Rebbe took over, there were a few, few followers. Today, there are Chabad chapters, um, Chabad houses, as they're called, all throughout the world, literally. They're, they're uh, communities of Jews. They're Syn like synagogues, like temples. Syn synagogues, temples, but Chabad house has a unique touch to it. It's not, like, it's not a membership organization where you have to uh, pay dues. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is invited. And everyone is brought in and uh, to share in the beauty of what Judaism has to offer. Mm. Can you explain to me um, the meaning and importance to Chabad of the term "Come to my garden"? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> I see your 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 early years in yeshiva is uh, still with you. Yes, and. Uh, Chabad is a, is, a, is a Hasidic group. Uh, Hasidic groups are steeped in, in Jewish mysticism. The mystical teachings of the Torah are considered the heart and soul of the Torah. And um, the Rebbe's ascension to the leadership was by sh giving over a teaching uh, based on the, the mystical teachings of the Torah and what the Rebbe uh, said that evening uh, in 1951, he based uh, his, his remarks on a verse in the Song of Songs. The Song of Songs is, a, uh, is, the, is one of the writings of King Solomon. It's, one of the, it's part of the Old Testament. King Solomon wrote three books. One is called um, uh, Song of Songs which is like a love, it's a love uh, poem between a man and a woman, but it's really a metaphor for the love uh, of God to the Jewish people and the Jewish people back to God. Then he wrote a book called Proverbs. Then he wrote a book called Ecclesiastes. So in the Song of Songs, there's a verse there where the king says, and this is a metaphor to God, that I've come to my garden, my sister, my bride, and um, based on the oral tradition, the oral teachings, this is referred to uh, when God came to this world on Mount Sinai and gave the Ten Commandments to the Jewish people uh, over 3,000 years ago. And the, and the gist of the Rebbe's talk was that God refers to this world as my garden, my orchard, my place of pleasure. 
The whole world. The yes. whole world. So while on the surface, uh, the world is, looks like a jungle and not like a garden, not like a, pla a, a place of an oasis of peace, on the contrary, but that's only if we look at the world from our, from our physical, finite, limited view. But if we take a look at the world from the Torah's perspective, the Torah is telling us that beneath the surface, it's all good. It's like a garden. And uh, it's a place of uh, nourishment and, and, and peace of mind. Mm -hmm. And that was like the, almost like the mission statement of what uh, was to follow over the course of close to 50 years, the Rebbe's leadership. If, uh, you know, throughout the many, many initiatives that the Rebbe undertook, uh, it, was all, it was all steeped on, the, uh, on these teachings. It's an invitation and a promise. So now there's another term I want to ask you about. It's called, I am responsible for you. Okay, wow. What, what does that mean in Chabad? Okay, that's a very, very, oh, wow. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> First of all, by the way, uh, David, if you want to jump in, and uh, please uh, don't let me just uh, talk on and on. But basically, we live in a society our society, the secular society, Western, the Western society, is that's pretty much uh, every man for himself. You know, you don't get into my way, and I won't get into your way, right? Mind your own business. Mm -hmm. It's my business. And in Judaism, and especially as is explained in, through the Hasidic teachings, the mystical teaching, is, a, is, the very, very, is very different. And that is, we're all collectively intertwined with one another. Our destinies are intertwined. And we each have a responsibility, not only to look out for ourselves and our families, but we have a responsibility to look out for other people. And those who are less fortunate <coughs> than us in, in, in a myriad different kind of ways. And basically, what the, what, what, um, the teachings teach us is that in the world you have those who give and those who receive, right? The truth is we're each givers and receivers. Mm -hmm. We may be giving in one area of life, but at the same time we are receiving and need to receive in other areas of life. And, and no one can, no one can uh, escape that responsibility both to be a receiver and to be a giver. And in this context, we need to look out and reach out and help out um, each other. One of the most basic uh, tenets of Judaism that uh, the founder of the Hasidic movement emphasized was Ahavas Yisrael, love of a fellow Jew, love of a fellow man. The principle in the Torah will love your neighbor, love your friend as yourself. And that has been um, really uh, one of the greatest uh, points of emphasis in the Hasidic teachings and what the Rebbe taught us. Okay. We're going to see how that plays out in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in, in, in the Chabad in Sydney, as opposed to maybe other synagogues in, in Australia, right after this break, that's Rabbi Itchel Krasnjansky, it's uh, David Plyer uh, and Shmuel Plyer right here in our studio. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Lisa Kimura. I'm the host of Family Affairs on Think Tech Hawaii. Join us every Tuesday at 11 a.m. to talk about the issues that really matter. Everything from policies that need to be changed in Hawaii to the fact that we need better gender equality so that we can all have a better shot. Again, join us every Tuesday at 11 on Think Tech Hawaii for Family Affairs. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stand the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha.
Okay, we're back. We're back with Rabbi Itchel Krasnijansky uh, and uh, David uh, Byer. Blyer. Blyer, sorry. And uh, Shmuel Blyer, which is actually Samuel. Okay. Yeah. So talk to us about the, the Chabad in Sydney. What's it like? What's it like to be a member of that Chabad? Um, and are you involved in the international you know, uh, net network of Chabads too? And um, how does it differ from the, the synagogue down the block, you know? So the difference is, uh, I've, I've, like the rabbi said, I've been here a few times. Um, one, one of the things I like that when we come here is we get to see a different angle of Chabad. I like that for my son and my other, and my, or my family, to see how, how that actually operates. Because in different countries, Chabad works differently, depends on where you are. For example, the rabbi, he puts on, he has a minion every day, he has a right, and he has on Shabbos, he has whoever wants to come and eat. They can come to a communal meal, eat Friday night. The rabbi works really hard, the whole family so puts on a meal Friday night, puts it on Shabbos day, where is it? When we're at home, we eat at home. We don't see that aspect of Chabad shining. Mm -hmm. We don't see that. We eat Maybe at home. Maybe you should go down there with the Rebetzin and cook for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't mind. <laughs> it's open invitation. <laughs> so that's an eye-opener to for us to see how... Chabad is open so that if, if uh, anyone wants to come right anywhere around here, they can come. It's open. The table's open. Come and have a meal. Do whatever you want. Whereas, whereas we have that. It, well, because I'm, I'm not a, uh, I don't work as a, as a rabbi, so I don't do that. You know, right? We have our Shabbos meals, let's say, at home, and we don't go to meals like that every week. Although there are some rabbis in Sydney, Australia also, who have, who have that as well. Just I, we don't. We don't go there. You have, you have more than more than a minion, though. You have plenty of Jewish people in the Chabad. A, a minion is uh, ten people. You got to have ten people to have a service. Um, so, uh, how big is Chabad in Sydney? So Chabad in, in Sydney is uh, pretty big. There's uh, there's I don't know the number, but there's a lot of Chabad rabbis in different areas, so that you can, you know, spread it out to reach more people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And. Um, um, where where do you have the services? Is it do you have a house? A, the rabbi called it a Chabad house. Do you have a place where everybody gathers? So, first, where, personally, where I go is the, the synagogue that I go to is actually a very interesting structure because the the synagogue it's in Bondi, which is near Bondi Beach. And oh, I've been there. That's you know, beautiful. Yeah, that so it's makes not far. Waikiki, you know, it's a it's good. It's not like Waikiki, but it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Okay, <laughs> and. Uh, so in the building that we are at, there's in fact three synagogues. There's one Chabad minion, and then there's a, what's called an Adas, so there's another um, traditional one, and then there's an Israeli Chabad Sfadi minion. So hmm. there's actually three synagogues operating in the one premises, which is really cute. And yeah. they operate really, you know, if we run out of whiskey, we go downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> and they give whiskey us whiskey. Whiskey and pound cake, wasn't it? <laughs> or chant, no, whiskey or chant or whatever it is. So it, it all works out. If we're missing a minion, we go down. Or if they're missing a minion, we go down. So it, it works really nicely. Yeah. You get to see the members of the Chabad on a social basis as well. You, 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 know, you have social experiences with them outside of Chabad. Out, what do you mean? Out, outside of the, you know, the meetings uh, in, in, in the Chabad house or in the synagogue, you know, do you know, do you, do you have social contact, social experiences with other members of Chabad in Sydney? Yeah, but yeah, you don't get to, see, yeah, but you don't really, you know, we all live our lives that you don't get to really see other people so much, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. And how about, do you have a, you have a cheder there? Well, yeah. It's a school. It's a school. school so school, you school go to the cheder, cheder, right? It's a tough. It's a school, so you do secular studies and you also do Jewish studies. Okay, and uh, are you ramping up for a bar mitzvah here some sometime, or have you had that already? I had that already last. Okay, two years ago. how recently was that? I'm just. I'm, I don't want to ask mm -hmm. your age, but we're focusing around the age thirteen here. <laughs> yeah, it was past. It was past. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Did you? Was it challenging for you? Nah. Nah. Easy. Yeah. Because you already spoke Hebrew and you were able yeah, to read from the books. Yeah. Yeah. No problem reading from the Torah. No. And the and the Haft Torah. No problem. No. no. <laughs> okay. You didn't need the uh, the what do you call the the marks, the tr tr trump. 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 
Not yeah. Trump. Trump. Not for Trump. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't even need that, do you? No. no. Those are marks on top of the Hebrew that help you pronounce it. And, and some people the vowels, are, yeah. are good enough so that they don't need the marks to pronounce. They already know how to pronounce it. So, I mean, what, you know, what, where does uh, the Australian, where does the Sydney Chabad fit in the larger scheme? Well, like I said, Chabad is pretty much in every major and small city in the world, like Sydney, uh, in Melbourne, I think there's even a larger Chabad presence. Uh, and then in all the outlying communities in Australia, like we have here in the States, in practically in every state, as well as in many major cities or smaller cities, we have Chabad. Here in Hawaii, we have Chabad on all the four islands. And basically, it's, um, it's outreach, basically reaching out to, to, uh, uh, you know, to many Jews who are scattered throughout the world and to uh, enable, enable the Jewish people to uh, connect to their... Connect, being connect. the operative word, yeah. yeah. to connect. So I have to tell you my story. Yes. Okay. Mm. I really had no connection with Lubavitcher um, or Chabad until this incident I'm going to tell you about. And it was in, it was in college. And I, I went to school in New York. I, uh, and I went to Manhattan a lot. And it uh, may have been law school. And I went to law school in Manhattan. So I'm walking up on you know, 6th Avenue, otherwise known as Avenue of the Americas. And I'm walking down the street, and there's this man who's dressed in, in uh, Hasidic clothing, you know, the payas and the beard look like you, and with, a, with a coat on, long coat and all that. And he approaches me in this, uh, in this um, very intimate kind of way, and he says, are you Jewish? Okay. Yes. He says, come with me. Oh, what's going on here? <laughs> and my wife is like wondering. <laughs> What's going on? Where is my husband disappearing to? <clears throat> but she waits, <clears throat> and he takes me into a truck, which is parked on Sixth Avenue. Okay, and there's a stairway at the back of the truck, and he takes me inside the truck. There are wooden benches, uh, tables, and there are tefillin on the tables. And he says, "How long has it been since you laid tefillin?" And I uh, said, "Oh, gee, since my bat mitzvah, a long time." <laughs> and he says. You need to remember how. Would you like to remember how? Would you like us to show you yet again how to do that? I said, sure. And so they, they showed me. And uh, it was loving. It really was. And it was such a great connection. And it left an impression from then till now. That was a long time ago. Wow. From then till now about, um, you know, the Chabad and Lubavitches and what they did to connect with people. And uh, I, I really appreciated it. I, I thought it was a, it was a charitable uh, gesture. And uh, I won't forget it. Beautiful. And so uh, I think it clicks with what you were talking about before, Rabbi. Yeah, so maybe I'll just quickly mention a couple of the, uh, the um, uh, teachings, the principles, like in bullet points, to give our audience just a little taste, a little understanding of, uh, you know, the movement is pretty much uh, um, fueled by the philosophy behind the movement, right? And the philosophy of the movement was first and foremost personified by the Rebbe himself. In Judaism, you can't just uh, talk the talk, you have to walk the walk as well. Otherwise, you're disqualified of being uh, an example or a leader, right? It's not enough just to know, you have to live it. And the Rebbe lived it in, on, on, the, on, the, on the greatest levels. He personified everything that he taught. So basically the teachings of Hasidus, the mystical teaching of the Torah, uh, one is that throughout the Rebbe's writings, we find something very, very, very apparent and very forceful. And that is the Rebbe was an extreme, you know, that's not a word that we like to use so much, but there was extremely positive. Uh, about everything and that in made life. him a leader. That, that made, made him somebody leader. you wanted to follow. Right, exactly, because he exudes positivity, and it was only all of his teachings are about what the Torah teaches us. They just have to dig beyond the surface, and you will see uh, the positive potential. So it, it, it was that was a message of uh, being positive and doing 
positive thing. Well, I see that in you, too. And that leads me to a question I want to ask you. Yeah. you know, so uh, Rabbi Schneerson died several years ago. Right. right. Um, and, um, 20 years ago. So 20, 20 years 20, ago, 20, yeah. So, and the movement, right. the Lubavitcher movement, Chabad, keeps going. But doesn't it need another leader like that? I mean, who is leading it now? Who is making it a worldwide organization? Who is the iconic person who speaks for it? Okay, that, you're touching upon a very, very important question. And the answer, in short, even though you probably won't be able to understand it immediately, is the Rebbe himself. Through his teachings, uh, he continues to inspire and, and lead because throughout the Rebbe's lifetime, the Rebbe was very, very prolific in his uh, writings and teachings. There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of volumes of the Rebbe's writings, and, and he would talk every Shabbos for hours and hours and hours and uh, talk words of Torah. So th this, th these teachings continue to uh, guide and inspire uh, the, the, the Jewish people and the Chabad movement uh, in particular. And it's also based on a teaching in the, in the Zohar, which is the mystical teaching of the Torah, and that is that the difference between righteous people and those who are not righteous people, the Talmud says that righteous people live on even after they pass away, and the, 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 the wicked people are considered dead even while they're alive. Right? Because... Uh, it's out of Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, that, and that's really the, the, the answer in a nutshell. Um, the Rebbe's teachings continue to, uh, to inspire us. As a matter of fact, the, the, the growth of Chabad after the Rebbe passed away has been exponential, even when the Rebbe was alive. Mm. Today we have, I believe, uh, close to 5,000 or maybe more than 5,000 Chabad centers around the world. And I would say at least two or three thousand of them came about after the Rebbe passed away. Interesting. Yeah. So it has it's plenty strong. of vitality. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's, well, that's, that's really uh, quite amazing. Now, you said before that this was um, derived from, involved with the mystical teachings of the Torah. Correct. And I want to explore with you, with all you guys, what, what is that mystical teachings of the Torah? Is it a secret? Uh, what is mysticism anyway, and how does it play in Chabad and in, you know, in, in this aspect of the Jewish religion? So just like a, a human being, just like you and me and all of us, we have a body and a soul, right? The body is the functional part of the person. The or we function through the organs of the body, but the body is animated and comes to life through the soul. When a person passes away, the body still uh, exists, but there's no life to it. So Jewish mysticism is the soul of the Torah, so to speak. It is the, uh, the deeper and inner um, understanding of, um, of God's word. The Torah is God's word, and uh, it, it, it's... Because God is infinite, the Torah is infinite in its depth, and there's layers and layers of meaning and understanding. So the, 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 the Old Testament, so to speak, that is like the codes. It's a code. Mm -hmm. uh, you can read it as story, uh, but if you are able to decipher the codes, uh, then a whole other story emerges. And so the code is is understandable through study correct so you study the torah to find this yeah. correct it's not a secret it's available to anyone exactly who exactly. wants to study the torah exactly that's yeah. a, that's a very good point and that is actually what chabad is all about to bring the the deepest teachings of the torah to any and every uh, person to any and every jew wow so things are the same like this in Australia, too. <laughs> what, what, what the rabbi is saying goes the same way in Chabad in Sydney, no? Yeah, yeah exactly. One yeah. of the other things I may say uh, that the Rebbe uh, taught and in his teachings is so uh, uh, prominent is the essential goodness that, that in every single person, in every Jew, that while 
Freud, for example, and this is my words, not therapy's words, while Freud or secular psychology or philosophy teaches that man, if you dig deep enough, you'll find he's inherently like an animal, the Hasidic mystical teachings of Torah teaches just the opposite, that if you dig deep enough, you'll find godliness and goodness, and that's the very We're beyond, beyond animals, beyond mammals. Exactly. This is really an important concept. It is. It's, it's a very the perfectibility of humankind. Yeah. Exactly. So are you studying this, right, Shmuel? Yeah. Okay. And you're going to be a good person, right? Yeah. You're already a good person. Yeah. Okay. Do you agree with that, David? <laughs> that if he's he's a already good a good person. Yeah, of course. Okay. All right. Well, you're all good people. Well, thank I love you, you all. Yeah. Same, and I love same. this discussion. Thank you so much for educating us, Rabbi, as always. Thank you. David thank you for and inviting us. Thank you for thank coming you. down. What a lovely show. Thank you. Aloha and shalom. Thank you. Shalom. Okay. So you